Convict. <laughs> Ocean travel. What a romantic, peaceful way to get somewhere. It's fast disappearing, more's the pity. But here we are on shore, and it's time to look around. Oh, oh by the way, welcome to my world. <laughs> Vincent Price, a world of many faces, a world that within minutes can change from the familiar to the mysterious, from the innocent to the deadly, from the beautiful to the bizarre. Come with us into the sights, the sounds, and the flavors of the world of Vincent Price. This episode comes to you from Fiji. You know what it says here? The first newspaper published in the world today. Do you know why? This is Fiji, a group of about 300 islands, about 1,200 miles south of the equator and about the same distance north of New Zealand. The international dateline passes directly through these islands, geographically speaking, that is. But in 1879, the meridian was conveniently curved to allow all of the Fijian islands to have the same time zone. So, here we are today. But it is uh, yesterday everywhere else, except where it's tomorrow. Fiji's native population is Melanesian, darker skinned than the Polynesians further north in the Pacific. The population is made up mainly of Fijians and East Indians living and working happily together, with a few Europeans thrown in to make up the balance. six years, Fiji was a British colony. In October of 1970, however, she became an independent dominion within the Commonwealth. Suva, where we are now, is the capital of Fiji. It's a beautiful, bustling seaport city with many delights for the traveler. There are broad boulevards, fine hotels, lush gardens, exotic marketplaces, and elegant dining. But that is only one face of Fiji here in Suva. When I travel, I like to, well, I like to seek out the places where the culture began. So let's explore it together, shall we? We're certain how the Fijian Islands came to be, geologically speaking at least, for the soil is volcanic in origin. But no one knows where the Fijian people came from. Were they always here from the beginning of time? Is this really Eden? Or did they migrate from elsewhere? It's a mystery. And anthropologists and historians are still battling out the possibilities. Archaeologists have discovered some strange artifacts here. 
including pieces of pottery that indicate that human beings have dwelt on these islands since at least 1300 BC. This leads us to believe that they must have come here in primitive dugout canoes over thousands of miles of open sea. Some experts believe it was from Southeast Asia that they followed the chains of islands northwest of here. There are other theories about the origins of the Fijian people. They are thought by many to have migrated from Polynesia. But I heard recently that some of the names are African in origin. But strangely enough, the blood type is Oriental. The legends are many, but the facts are few. And so we are left to wonder how these handsome, athletic-looking people got to be where they are. In the lushness and solitude of this tropical forest, one can be at peace. And it's easy to forget the hair-raising tales of wars and battles and bloody skirmishes. The history books are full of them, because the early Fijians were a fearsome race. The reasons for the fighting were familiar enough, territorial domination, tribal power, and to the victors went the spoils, including any prisoners taken. The evening celebration after such a battle would consist of the preparation and serving of a certain dish called long pig. Entire villages would share in the feast of long pig, and after a sizable skirmish, one could come back for seconds. Because the long pig I am referring to, of course, was whomever lost in the battle of the day. I might just add that until Queen Victoria's governors put an end to this type of festivity around 1890, these islands were known not as Fiji, but as the Cannibal Islands. <laughs> Fiji has come a long, long way from those sometimes inhospitable battling days of old. The Fijians today are a most courteous people, anxious to make visitors feel welcome. They will share their legends and their customs. A few visitors are welcomed as I am now with the unique honor of the kava ceremony, a mysterious and rather touching ritual with roots in ancient lore. Its meaning is an offering of friendship and trust. In the kava ceremony, the participants drink a potion called yangona. Yangona is a mixture of water and the root of a pepper plant, ground and blended to the proper consistency. Oh. There is 
in Yangona, a substance which numbs the mouth and lips after it is drunk. A little like the dentist's Novocaine injection does. Well, I shall soon see. Bulak. Bulak. so fearsome to man is fire, no pain so agonizing as that of a severe burn, and no phenomenon in the world quite so mystifying as that of witnessing human beings walking on red-hot stones, the Fiji Firewalkers. men from all over the world who have witnessed the fire walking ceremony and who have examined the walkers before and after their contact with the fire pit have debated the enigma endlessly. Is it uh, self-hypnosis or faith? I mean, what possible power can protect these people from even the slightest hint of a burn? Well, there is no explanation. And while undeniably spectacular, fire walking is only one of the many strange and unexplainable phenomena of this remarkable place, where so much has been handed down from the past, Fiji. Well, I don't know about you, but for the moment, for me, I've had enough of Fiji's incredible past. So let's go into the present, shall we? Let's leave the mysterious and enter the magnificent, right here. This is Fiji's luxurious, beautiful, and yet secluded hotel, the Fijian. It is spread out all over its own little island. And best of all, the chef has asked us to join him on the beach. Now, I would like you to meet Master Chef Peter Pellet. Peter? Hello, Vincent. Good to see you. Nice to see you. We've had some wonderful meals here. You've come a long way, haven't you, since yes. you started your training as a chef? I come from Germany. Frankfurt. From Germany, yeah. Frankfurt, and then yeah. where? I'm at the subway in Singapore. Singapore. Final of the Fiji. In Fiji, that sounds very glamorous yeah. to me. You know, I noticed that you have literally piles of coconuts all over the place. What are you trying to do? Corner the market on no, coconuts? I'm planning to put you to work. Put you me can, to work? Yes, you can give me help. You can make me some coconut milk. Some coconut milk. All right, I'll do just that. Now, you know, a lot of people think that I don't know how to milk a coconut. <laughs> but I do. <laughs> all you need is some grated coconut and a sieve, and some water, and some very hungry chickens. I'll explain about those chickens in just a minute. Okay, now you take the coconut, and you put the water over it, and you let it soak in there for about five minutes, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. three to five minutes, All right, yeah. and then you push it through, yeah. and it comes out, and then I believe that you pour the water over again to make it richer. Yeah, that's right. As oh. more you're doing, as more we're just getting. It's getting and the more richer the coconut gets. Yeah. Wonderful. There we are. Now we've got the coconut. My Lord, you've got it. Awful lot of coconut here. What are you what are you gonna do? Cook everything in coconut? Oh, tonight? more or less, yeah. We're yeah. making we're trying to make some appetizer tonight and uh, some fish yeah. and uh, 
And for the night special is um, Cocon, that oh, is. Right. <laughs> Wonderful. You know, I won't keep you in suspense any longer about those chickens. Hmm? You see, when you get through, you take this pulp and you feed it to the chickens. That's where you have chickens stuffed with coconut, too. <laughs> That's not true. That's right. <laughs> Peter, I was being facetious when I was kidding you about having so many coconuts and having to work so hard to make the coconut yeah. milk. But really, quite seriously, coconuts are kind of the staff of life of the oh, yes. islands. Yeah, in fact, to many North Americans, a coconut is simply that brown, hairy-looking nut they see in the fruit and vegetable bins in their supermarket. To the Fijians, the coconut groves are their supermarket, open 24 hours a day and they may pop around any time they like to shop. And they will go to great heights to get just the right nut. There they are, coconuts, in their more succulent form. Green and inviting, growing wild by the tens of thousands. The liquid of the green coconut is very refreshing, but while it's in this form, it, it isn't coconut milk. It's called coconut water. Not until the coconut flesh is shredded and mixed with water water can the liquid inside be called milk. The versatile and plentiful coconut is a staple of Fijian diet, of course, but it has a wide variety of uses. Traditionally, the rope, which is called ma'i ma'i, was woven from the shredded husks of coconuts. The long, fibrous strands were braided and the coconut ropes were used to tie together the supporting timbers of houses. Copra, dried, sun-baked coconut flesh, is a source of oil and is an important export product of Fiji. Oh yes, there is one more use for the ripened inner coconut shell. When halved, it makes a very functional Yangona cup for the kava ceremony, as I discovered earlier. All this talk about coconuts has made me hungry, so let's get back to the cooking. Uh. Peter? Yes? Uh, now, what is our main dish going to be? Oh, tonight this will be Ika Vakalolo. Ika Vakalolo. That's what right. does that mean? Ika? Ika. Ika means fish. Fish. Vakalolo. Uh, Vako means with. With. Yeah. And Lolo? Is a coconut milk. Coconut. Whatever Lolo wants. I'm sorry. Never yeah. mind. Now, you're going to use this. What kind of a fish is it? A... That's a walu fish. A walu. Yeah. Looks like a mackerel family, huh? Yeah, it belongs to it. Oh, it's a beautiful fish. It is. Now, let's see. Ah, beautiful. It's got so much meat. And it's oh, very yeah. sort of moist, isn't it? Yeah, it's very yeah. moist. Wonderful. Super. There we go. Now, that's where a good knife comes in handy, doesn't that's it? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Beautiful. So? Yes. It's roughly about times three ounces. Three ounces yeah, of something fish, like right. Yeah. Yes. There we go. Super. Wonderful. All right. That's a, that's enough for sort of about two people, isn't it? That's just enough for right. two people. All right. Yeah. Now what so, happens? So now I have to cut the onions. Yes, the onions. First, uh, yes. put some butter into the yeah. thing, all right. So now we place a fish fillet into two. it. Two fish into it. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. It's just two. Oh, that's just yes, yeah. two. Yeah. 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 So now the onions, huh? The onions. Yeah. So. So. And so then what? You have the taro leaves. Oh, yeah. the taro leaves. Yeah, you should not forget taro. this one. Taro leaves, now, you know, I mean, we just don't happen to have taro leaves uh, in many places. So, what else could you use? Well, you can jump around in the supermarket and get some spinach. Spinach? Yeah. I have heard of spinach, yes. Yeah. Now, you put that right on top of it. Right on top, yeah. Yeah. So, that takes a seasoning, one lemon. Lemon, right. I love the way you squeeze it through your fingers so you don't get the seeds in. Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, well, I'm sorry. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Everything's fine now. So. Now. 
some uh, take some white wine. A little white wine, yeah. right? How much? Just a just a just a, dose, yeah. just a, a little dash. sprinkle. And now don't tell me what comes next, because I know and I have worked very hard. Oh, first the oh, salt. First, I'm so I'm sorry. sorry. All right. So and then a little bit of pepper. A little pepper. Yeah. Pepper. All right. So, yes. Wonderful. And then we put uh, coconut milk. Oh, oh, I worked and worked and slaved to do that. So then we cover it on yeah. under low heat, yes. simmer it for about 10 minutes. If you don't happen to have wallow, which I don't happen to have, uh, what else could, could you use? Oh, well, you may can use some red snapper fish. Red snapper. Any kind of fish which swims deep, I guess. Halibut, could you use halibut? You may could use A little halibut. dry, though, yeah, I would Well, think. that's okay, because you have the coconut milk and the yeah. lemon juice, it makes nice. What uh, about shrimps? Milk. Shrimps or lobster. Lobster, yeah, yeah. wonderful, yeah. Exactly. wonderful. And you leave that for 10 minutes, yeah. and then it is all done. And, and fish really should never be overcooked, should it? No, it should not, because then it loses the taste. Loses the taste. Yeah. Wonderful. Now, I'm going to get around here and ask you about this vegetable, which I know we cooked before. It's very strange looking. What yeah. is that? But it's cassava. Cassava. Also, they're calling it tapioca. Tapioca. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I really can't wait to taste this. I suppose it's all been worth the time of my effort in milking the coconut. If you put milking the coconut. Yes, I suppose it's been worth it, and I'll be tasting it in a minute. You know, it's extraordinary how subtle the flavor of coconut milk is. It, it really doesn't taste like coconut at all. And each dish, it's a little bit different. And then they use it for desserts and drinks, everything. It's really marvelous. And this is the cassava. Very good. I've really enjoyed that. I'm going to try it at home. Hope you do. Peter, Winston, thank you so much. Very welcome. It's I hope delicious. you enjoyed it. I it's did enjoy nice. it. Thank, thank you, you so you. much. Right. Bye. Well, I hope you have been as intrigued as I have been with everything that we have seen here on these beautiful, lush islands of Fiji, and that you have wondered at it as I have wondered at it. While I can't understand everything any more than you can, I, I can enjoy. And I promise you that wherever we travel together, that we will always witness the interesting and the unusual, and that we will dine sumptuously. So won't you join me on our next stop? To the people of Fiji, Vinaka, Bakalevu.
Pneumatic.